Hey, what's up everybody? Ryan here from the Lone Ranger channel and I've got a pretty awesome treat for everybody today. Now I know you're used to all seeing my beautiful face plastered all over this channel, but today we are showing you Beth's first fully produced video that she put together herself, which is so cool to see. And I know lots of our female viewers out there, which there are a lot of, by the way. So cool to see all of you here and Beth is pumped about it as well. So for Beth's first fully produced video, she wanted to do a learn how to jump video because that's what she's working on right now. And as always on this channel, we like to bring in the experts that know way more than we do. So we brought in Ben, who's a certified mountain bike coach out in Whistler, and they're gonna go hit up Crank It Up and go through all of the steps on learning how to jump. And even for someone like me who's been working on jumping for a few years now, I learned a ton from this video. So I'm pumped for you to see it. I'm even more pumped that Beth has this first produced video coming out. So uh, good things all around. Let's kick it over to Beth and Ben over in Whistler. Hey everybody, I'm Beth here from the Lone Ranger and we're here today at Whistler Bike Park and we're on an iconic jump trail called Crank It Up. And I'm here with Ben, he's gonna teach me how to jump today. Perfect. Uh, so we're going to go through, we're going to start off with looking at the anatomy of a jump uh, so we can understand how it works and why we're going to do what we're going to do. Because part of the problem is a lot of people can jump, but they don't know why they're jumping or how to progress with it. Yeah, so one of my issues with jumping is I've started to clear some of the jumps, but I don't know exactly why I'm clearing them necessarily, and I don't know what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. And hopefully by the end of the day, I'll be clearing Crank It Up. Okay, so. What we're going to have a look at is the anatomy of a jump because one of the reasons to understand the anatomy of a jump is to understand where to do what. When we're looking at a jump, one of the things that we actually uh, consider being really important is having a point of commitment. At this point of commitment is where you don't want to, you don't want to engage your brakes afterwards uh, and that's where you're committed to doing the jump. So it can be quite a long way back from the jump. So for example, with this jump here, my point of commitment is going to be far enough back that I know that once I'm past it, if I, if I hit the brakes at that point, I would be able to stop before the jump and be safe. So the point of commitment for this jump, coming in at trail speed, is gonna be this, this roller just behind us. Past the point of commitment, as I said, no brakes, you're committed to the jump and you're doing the jump. Then we have the ramp on the jump, and then just at the end of the ramp, because the ramp is the up, just at the end of the ramp, we have the lip, which we consider the top foot or so of the jump. Flat platform on top, because it's a tabletop, and then the landing down ramp. Okay, so we've just looked at the anatomy of a jump. What we're going to do is we're going to go through the motion of approaching the jump and dealing with actually jumping. So as I said, we've, we've rolled in, we've reached that point of commitment. Once we've reached that point of commitment, we know we're in a, like, I'm going to hit the jump motion. You're in the neutral position with your arms extended, but with soft elbows, soft knees. That means that you're ready to move with your bike and absorb or push. As we approach the jump, we're rolling through at trail speed. We're coming to the ramp and this is going to depend Every single time, every jump is a slightly different shape, but you're gonna press down on the bike. The press is mostly through the legs, and it's, it's a big push. Your pedals are level because you need to push the bike evenly, compressing the front and rear suspension at the same time. You'll find if you compress the rear more, that'll kick your rear wheel up, and you compress the front more, then you'll probably go towards heading over the back. And the bigger you press, the more the bike will uh, compress and then come back up. And as it comes back up, that, is essentially like your bunny hop that's gonna cause your bike to take off. And when you get to the lip, you're letting the bike come towards you. We've taken off, we're now in the air. As I said before, we've let the bike come up towards ourselves and it's nice and close to the body. But before we actually land, we need to make sure that we extend the bike back out again. So you're doing that fairly late in the procedure, but you need to give yourself enough time. You can extend the bike back out so that when you land, you're not landing with a hard impact. All right, it's time to get on the bike and give it a try. Because that one, it was all compression through the forks right, and not through not your legs. Really. I think I was focusing too much on the arms. Yeah, and that's what it looked like because your rear wheel came back this far and your front wheel like fell <laughs> off. Second run is always better. All right, let's give it Go a try. What you did there is instead of pushing the bike down, yeah. you came down to it and then kind of tried to push up instead okay. to take off, uh, instead of compressing the bike through your whole body. Yeah. But <laughs> you're getting more and more comfortable on this jump, aren't you? Yes. That's the thing. Like now you know where it is, like the layout, yeah. take off, the landing. So I think one more time and really focus on giving a push through your legs. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so cover the foundations. Beth's working on it. She's now got it in her head and she knows what she's doing. So we're gonna move on down the trail and go work on something a little bit bigger uh, that doesn't just require speed to clear so that Beth can keep working on that technique and improving. Well done. How did that feel? Not bad. Yeah, not bad. Okay. Cleared the jump, I saw you prepping on the way up, giving it a couple of squishes, giving it a couple of pushes, making it feel like you knew you were going to press for it. Mm -hmm. And I think all those jumps in between where we were practicing earlier and here yeah. have made a big difference and you've, you've like helped establish that in your head a little more um, because that looked much, much better. Sweet. <laughs> Now, it was time to get out of my head and take those five points to the trail. It definitely was improving, having fun, and feeling more confident on the jumps. I wasn't able to hit my goal of clearing all of Crank It Up, but like all things worth learning, practice is key. Fast forward a few weeks later, and I'm starting to clear jumps I wouldn't normally think of hitting. The hack back. Good job. On it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go over the five points one last time. One, choose your point of commitment. Two, have a neutral body position leading into the jump. Number three, once you hit the ramp of the jump, press the bike into the ground evenly, front and rear. Number four, when you hit the lip of the jump, let the bike come back in towards you. And five, just before landing, extend your arms and legs to soften the impact. And you, sir and or ma'am, are now a jumping master. Do you have any of your own tips for learning how to jump? We'd love to hear about them in the comments below. We want to give a huge thank you to 661 Protection for sponsoring this trip to Whistler. There's a link in the description below for 661, so make sure you click that to check out all their awesome gear. So if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more mountain bike videos every week. Cheers, everybody!